I see Chris call. I was on the bus just now, and I got this weird feeling that he called me and wanted to get back together again. I just knew it. Damien, I started this letter a thousand times. It's not easy. I'm not sure how you'll take this, but... How do I tell her? What do I say? What are you doing? What? I thought the whole purpose of this phone call was so that I could talk to him. Oh, I talked to him instead. Well, what about me asking for your hand in marriage? I mean, it was your idea. Well, I changed my mind. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Well, how did he react? Oh, you know, Pop. He didn't approve, huh? Well, it was bad weather down there. He was in a rotten mood. Okay, Kathleen. Just what exactly did he say? Over my dead body. Yes. Yeah. No. Donna, I could go buy one at the newsstand. Michael Hudson, Chief Executive Officer of New Resources, the multinational conglomerate. Announced today the takeover of transatlantic shipping in a sudden and daring corporate move. This is our Michael Hudson, table boy. Yes. What is this, some sort of joke? I mean, why is he working here? What's he trying to pull? Safeguard has a unique combination of unbeatable deodorant soap protection and a rich thick leather. Give your body the best. Give it Safeguard. Don't worry, Pat. He'll cool down. Cool down? What does he get to be hot about? Well, you know how he feels about you. So we were never buddy-buddy. Oil deal. and water, Pat. No, but he's got a daughter to think about here. How can he treat you like that? He's just treating me like his little girl, and I am the first one to get married. Even so. Over my dead body? I mean, where does that come from? Well, he just seems to always get me into trouble. Trouble? Me? Oh, trouble like Cecile, like Ross, like Emily Benson killing a nurse, like Tony the Tune. I mean, you have to face it, my life hasn't been exactly settled since I met you. Now, a lot of that was unavoidable. Besides, I've changed. I'm a different person now. Very different. I know. And that's why I don't want you to worry. And I will explain it to Pop. But the only objection he has about me? Mostly. Kathleen. Well, I don't think he's ever gotten over the fact that you were wearing a dress and you pretended to be Crystal Lake. I had a very good reason for that. He knows the reason, Kath. He's just being a little difficult about this. There's more. Well, just a little thing. Just a, just, you know how he's, he's always um, uh, raised us to be thrifty? You mean cheap? Thrifty. He has a, a crazy idea into his head that, that he... He thinks you're marrying me for my bank account. Your what? Okay, this has really gone far enough. I'm going down there to straighten this out man to man. Where is he, West Virginia? I'll drive all day if I have to. This is ridiculous. You don't have to. Why, why don't I have to? Because he's coming back to the city. Oh. Well, fine. Let me know when he gets into town. I'll be ready for yeah, him. Yeah, can you just calm down? You're not going to accomplish anything this way. Just let me talk to him first, okay? I will explain everything, and then you guys can saunter on down to more hands and hoist a few brews, and you'll get along famously. No. We have to take care of this. Vince and me. It's between us. Besides, if we go down to some bar, it'll end up a, a, a brawl. Don't you dare fight with my father. You have to understand how serious I am about you. It's cool out here. Wait a second. If I can change your mind with a puppet, I can change his with physical violence, if necessary. Pat! I'm kidding. I can handle Vince, don't you think? Don't you think it's about time you got to work? 
Yes, I guess it is. Why don't you stay here and get some rest? Rest? Yeah. We need it. That's who? Well, we're staying up all last night talking and uh, jet lagged and what whatnot. I am not an invalid, Cass. I am not a baby either. Kathleen, everybody needs sleep. Oh, except Cass the Invincible. I have at least as much stamina as you do. Yeah, and you have plenty of that old McKinnon stubbornness, too. Did you inherit that from your old man? I am not nearly as stubborn as my father, and that is not what we are talking about. Oh, it's not? No. Well, would you deign to enlighten me as to your opinion as to what we're talking about? <laughs> Do you remember our first fight? Sure I do. It's when I hired you to impersonate <laughs> <laughs> She's offered me starvation wages. Oh, it was a good little job. A good little job? Sure. Yeah, um, impersonating a woman who's about to be the queen of Tony Kira, future queen, and you wanted to pay me minimum wage. Yeah, you got to travel, see the world. You loved her. Kathleen, let's not get into comparing. As much as you love me? That wasn't love. That was just an obsession. Is there a difference? Yes, there is. There's an enormous difference. I wasn't even half a man then. I was just this ridiculous person. Kathleen. I love you more than anybody I've ever known. I could imagine knowing. Lean forward a little. Kathleen, maybe I should stay. No. Okay, I'll beg. Yes, you don't know. No, Kathleen, no. come on. I have a million things to do before we get married. I know. <laughs> you can say it, but it's hard to believe. <laughs> kind of. If you do want to accomplish something, you can clean out that large bureau back there in the bedroom. Please? I mean, clear it. Clear it out. It's going to be yours. Aha! I see. You want a maid for a wife, huh? Oh, don't misconstrue this. Why have I got your number? Are you sure? I've been home all day and the phone hasn't rung. <laughs> Good move, Nancy. Boy, you should have seen me running down the block. Maybe he'll call later. Well, of course he will. You are talking to Ms. Optimus. Maybe Bell. we should just call him. No way, Harley. I know that if it were Jake, no I would... No way, Harley. Harley. It's not Jake, it's Chris. I'm not like you. I'm not very good at this stuff. <laughs> Who is? You know, it's funny, you guys, but... I don't know, sometimes I feel like I don't even want to get back into this relationship. Yes, you do. You said he was the greatest thing that ever came into your life. Now, don't deny it. Yeah, but all we've been doing lately is trying. Things have been really hard on Chris the last little while. Yeah, I mean, how would you like it if somebody said, you can't dream anymore? They take away your dreams, like saying, I can't sing, or, or Marley uh, can't be a twin. So he needs to be a doctor. That doesn't mean he needs me. You sure about that? Is he calling me up? Is he running over here to see me? Come on, guys have to act tough, you know? They have to handle things on their own. And I want him to need me, you know? I, I need to be needed. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. I don't believe this, you guys! On top of everything else, I bounce a check. How is that possible? Look, there are minus dollars there. When you see minus dollars, that's, that's a bad sign. I know, but... I'm supposed to have a thousand dollar credit line on my credit card. This this is impossible. I think I'm, I'm gonna go straighten this out right away. I'm really surprised. Oh. Been doing a lot of shopping lately. <laughs> I know. Every time the girl fights with Chris, she just mixes up her priorities. I mean, look at this stuff. Don't you know that I am living in a material world? And I am a material girl. Well, and Susie's is a very expensive boutique. She keeps going on like this. They shall name it Nancy. Well, Nance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, the check got bounced. With our rent. Yeah, yeah, I talked to the landlord this morning. Mm. Well, I'll let another. Well, <laughs> what's that going to solve? Well, it won't solve anything, but I... I think we have to take it easy on Nancy right now. Okay, fine, but if this can get worse, then what's going to stop us from doing this again and again? Chris. 
Chris can stop her. Yeah, I know, he can too. But will he? We both know it wasn't working out. Maybe it's best to end it. We can still be friends, but we can't tell her like that. It's uh, Chris. Is Nancy there? Chris? Hi, Aunt Nancy. Uh, we really have to get together. Well, sure, anytime. Uh, how about today? We really need to talk. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, Chris. Uh, you want me to come over? No, uh, I'll, I'll come over there. Okay, great. I'll be waiting. Okay. Um, Chris, I'm really glad you called. Right. Uh, I'll see you soon, then. Okay. Bye. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Come on, somebody's got to know what's going on. Okay, what does this Michael Hudson guy want with you? Donna? Donna? Look, Joan, all right? Yeah, well, why not? Why is she so upset? What does this guy do to her? She's just not handling it very well. Leave her alone. You left your wife and came back off your honeymoon for this, didn't you? Max sent me. No, Max wouldn't do that. Is this guy really our stable boy? How come you're being so quiet? Something's going on here. You know? I mean, how does Donna know this guy's picture is going to be on the front page of the New York Times? Look, Peter, you can talk to me or I'll go up and talk to Donna, whatever She's you want. She's upset. I don't think any of us knew this was going to happen. Peter, come on. All right, all right, look. Donna and Michael had an argument last night, and she fired him. Now, apparently when he left, he told her to take a look at today's Times. That's it? That is it. Except that I'm going to try to find him. I got a few questions I'd like to answer myself. So there's mega millionaire tycoons that spend hanging out around here? Apparently so. Well, what's he trying to pull? Michael Hudson, from what I know of him, has some pretty unorthodox business styles. Apparently he's got a pretty unorthodox personal style as well. Yeah, but well, why is he sneaking around here? I mean, what does he want from us? Maybe he has his sights set on Corey Enterprises, huh? And he's going to take him over from the stables? All right, look, I know it's kind of far out, but I mean, you, you work yourself into a family situation. You wait for some family member who's unhappy, who has a good chunk of stock, and... Yeah. And it's, you know, it's kind of weird, but it does happen. Uh-huh. Who are you calling? McCall's Hotel. He wasn't in when I called earlier. Yeah, but still doesn't tell me why Don is so upset. Yeah, Michael Hudson, please. This is Peter Love. Thank you. Not taking any calls. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to check on Donna. And then I'm going to his hotel and have a little talk with Mr. Hudson in person. Yeah, I think I'm going to come with you. No, no, I want to handle this myself. Peter, I think that... Vicki, stay here with Donna, please. All right. Ruben, just hold on for a second. Um, did Donna Love call? Uh, down 1-8. No, Peter Love. Did you want to return it? No, no, uh, just, uh, I only want to talk to Donna. Twelve and a half. I think it's bottomed out. You wait. Ready? Uh down a quarter. All right. Ruben, uh, yeah, I want you to buy 15,000 shares of Applied Biotech. Okay. Right. How did you know it was going to go down <laughs> that far? Instinct. So why only 15,000 shares? Well, I want to buy the company, but I don't want them to know that I want to buy the company. Oh, you sly devil. Yeah. <laughs> huh. As long as you're there, how are we doing? New resources, all-time high. How about that? Well, you and Caruso seem to have done quite well while I was away. Looks that way. For the short run. But listen, Mike. Since you've been gone, we've been applying temporary patches on everything. I mean, all you have to do is look at that memo from Caruso. I know. So are we flying back tonight? No. Don't tell me you're saying. I thought whatever game you were playing would end with this picture in the Times. Well, the first part of it did. 
There's more. Yeah, there's one more shoe to drop. Then we can say goodbye to Bay City forever. Sherry, that's not possible now. Mike? No, it can't be helped. There are people here that I really care about, and I want them to know it. Donna Love, for one? Well, that depends. If she cooperates. If she doesn't, she is going to get to see one of Michael Hudson's famous takeover moves. Mm -hmm. Are you, um, sure you got enough time to do this? Yeah, I, I really wasn't in any kind of hurry. Come on in. I got a lot of material, Chris, and it's all good. The one piece I'm missing is an interview with you. I mean, uh, after all, you are the center of this whole treasure. Right. Yeah, well, I'd really like to help you out, Jake, but I don't know. Listen, listen, Chris, the last thing I want to do is push you into this. I know. I know you put a lot of work into this documentary. I mean, I do have enough footage to finish this whole thing. I just thought you might want to give your side of the story. Well, I mean, I really admire everything you've done. First, you fought Carl. You found the treasure. You treated Mac and Rachel. Very courageous thing to do. I don't think people know that. I think this tape will change it. I appreciate the offer, Jake. Really, I do. But I gotta fight my own battles, you know, my own way. Chris, I'm not doing this for charity. I mean, if we sell this thing to a network, we can make some major bucks. Right. Uh, I just don't know if I want to be seen on national network TV as the ex-Dr. Chapin, you know? Come on, doggy. Right, Brought to your it. present. Hey! Hey, high five! Hey, 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 take it easy, Carl. Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Um... Look, I'd like to hang out with you guys, but I got a bigger plane. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate yeah. it. Don't worry about the, the uh, the cassette was lousy idea. <laughs> I'm sorry, really. No, just yeah. forget it. Sorry. See you guys later, huh? Yeah, all right. I appreciate your chance. All right. See you, Jake. Listen, Thomasina wanted me to bring by a piece of the apple spice cake that she made. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, she's too much. Where does she find time to bake? Between the hospital and taking care of the baby. Hey, hey. I took care of the baby. Hey, I know you do. You must be a handful, huh? Oh, the way that kid's going next season, he's going to be wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you smile again. Are you getting better? Sure. Every day and every way. Bye -bye. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I'd do. You know, I mean, if I got injured and they said, no more football, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah, well, the trick is to keep yourself busy, you know? Yeah? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Here, check this out. Hmm. My very own schedule. Whoa. 9.30, breakfast with Mrs. Allen, youth center. 11.15, new clinic? Yeah, I'm helping him set up some programs. Oh, wow. Lunch with Dr. Bell. Yeah, he's a great guy. He helped me uh, at the hospital. He's one of the few people who stood up for me. Yeah. 3 to 5, lunch with Dr. Withers. Right? That's psychopathology, so I can understand the tiny brain of Dr. Long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a full schedule. Yeah, and I'm monitoring some courses at the university, too. Sounds like me when my dad died. I just didn't want to sit down. Yeah. Well, you know, I had to get out of that hospital scene. You know, being a, a resident that keeps you jumping all the time, doing research, you know, in contact with real people. Mm -hmm. Great thing about the clinic is that's where medicine really happens, you know. You can get... Time out. Time out. Okay, maybe you've got yourself convinced, but you're not fooling me. This has got to hurt, right? I mean, if I was going through it, I'd want to be around Thomasina and the baby. Well, you're lucky you haven't. And you're lucky. But you've got Nancy. Not anymore, man. Oh, Chris, come on. Now you're running down the field backwards. And this time, you two should be getting closer. I think it's too late for that, Carl. Oh, no, it's going to be too late for you. And you're the one that needs the support right now. Have you seen Nancy lately? Mm-hmm. Been over a couple of times. How does she seem? Pretty miserable. You know she misses you. Come on. Yeah, it's tough. I, don't, I just couldn't make her understand what I was going through, Carter. Hey, remember what I said, okay? Yeah. It's, it's going to be worse going through it alone. Will you see her? Yeah, I'm on my way over there right now. Okay, then maybe you ought to give her a second chance. I don't know. I'm not sure, Carter. Come on, Chris. Think about it. I mean, if you walk away now, you're going to be hurting yourself more than you'd be hurting me. Face. Chris is going to be here any minute. It's not Chris, it's the bank. You guys, my accounts are delinquent. You're not even sure when they'll turn it over to a collection agency. What happened to your line of credit on your credit card? It only really works if you have the money left on your credit card. You spent the limit on your credit card this month? 
A little over, actually. Well, what, what was the limit? He doesn't want to know. <laughs> also, um, the check that bounced, I'm afraid it was a rent check. We no. know. Marley wrote out another one. Oh, I feel just terrible about this. No, he don't worry. Yeah, I mean, come on. I look at me, Miss Bankruptcy herself. I've been where you are a lot of times. That's just it, you guys. You can't afford having me around. Yeah, see, it was just a few dollars. Yeah, now come on, forget about it. You gotta think about Chris. <gasps> Don't tell him, you guys. He's gonna think I'm totally irresponsible. He won't. You know, I have been such a pain, haven't I? I mean, tying up the phone, running up all these bills. Look, you guys can't wait to get rid of me, can no, you? No, Nancy, we love having you here. Why? I haven't contributed anything. Oh, well, what about the guacamole? Yes, that was dynamite stuff. Yes, yes. yes. Now, come on, Nancy. You are like family to us. We love you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love you guys too oh. so much. <laughs> hey, maybe Chris will ask me to move in with him. I mean, that'll solve all my problems. <laughs> well, actually, he didn't have any money either. I don't want to be too pushy. Nancy, why don't you just stay here until you get back on your feet, all right? Yeah. I can't believe you guys are being so nice about Well, this. it's like you said, family. I am going to make a new resolution. No more impulse shopping. Mm -hmm. And I am going to try to pay back my credit card bill somehow. <laughs> like just get a job. Yeah, yeah, a real job. I mean, not this telephone sales stuff. And I'm going to limit myself to a budget. That's a very good idea. Yeah, I will take you on a guided tour down the no-name aisle of the supermarket. <laughs> okay, you will be amazed at what you can get there. Today is a new beginning, you guys. It's Chris. And I'm even going to return this and all the other stuff I haven't worn yet. Good, that's, that's the perfect way, Nancy. But I love this outfit, you guys. I mean, this is the kind of stuff Chris likes to see me in, you know? Maybe I'll just wear this for when Chris comes over and we'll take it back later. Nancy, 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 let him see the old Nancy. Yeah, you think that's gonna be good enough? Well, whatever's going on, it seems like a pretty thing. You know, Sherry, for years I have spent all my time either in offices or on planes dealing with people that I didn't like, getting something from them because I had to get something from them. But I built myself an empire. And then I came here. And you know, it was like living a fantasy again. I mean, I was 18. All I could do was skip work. And I dreamed of a future that was just out of my touch. Then you do admit it. You were just playing hooky. No. I was discovering things, parts of myself that I didn't know existed. I, I found a part of myself that was growing here that I, I never knew was there. I just, I want to have time to get to know it. I, I have to. I have to come to terms with it. I know I'm not supposed to ask what that means. <laughs> Are you expecting anyone? I am not speaking to anyone but a woman named Donna Love. Two chairs? Can I help you? I want to talk to Michael. Can I ask what this is about? Yeah, he knows me. And I think he knows what this is about. Stay tuned for the next part of Another Work. They're gathered together to mourn the passing of a mistress, the passing of a friend, the passing of this woman, Santa Barbara, this week. The next part of another world. You missed my writing lesson. Well, I apologize. And you put Donna in bed and you made Peter interrupt his honeymoon and fly all the way back here. I did? Yeah, you're a walking hurricane. <laughs> so are you going to tell me what's going on here or not? What, nobody's told you? No. Well, then I suggest you go back and you ask them again. Well, I wanted to get it straight from the horse's mouth, you know what I mean? What's so funny? Well, just the way you barged in here and just assumed that I was going to tell you. That surprise you? Well, at first, yes, but uh, then I realized you came in here exactly the way you were supposed to. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Sherry, Sheila, why don't you keep lunch now, okay? She looked good. Can you miss your overalls? No, as a matter of fact, uh, I may be putting them on again soon. Uh, please hold all calls for Mr. Hudson. Read Thank all you. about you in the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, millionaire, man about town. They didn't mention, though, how well you shovel out stalls. Hmm. Excuse me? Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, uh, now you can tell me everything that's going on. Did Peter send you here? No. Saw him downstairs and hung up the phone, walked off. Hmm. Didn't know I was here. Came all on my own. You look great, much better than you did at the stable. Well, thank you. You are for something, though, even though it's not obvious. Mm -hmm. Just like to know what it is. Look, uh, Victoria, I hate to be mysterious. I, I really like to explain, but I can't. Have anything to do with wanting to take over Corey Enterprises? That is an interesting theory. Yeah, it's Peter's. Mm -hmm. For two. Well, look, young lady, if you think you can walk in here and steamroll me into giving you an answer, you are wrong. Me steamroll you? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I'll leave you alone if you do me a favor. Huh? Lend me three hundred thousand dollars. Well, how did it go? Oh, it was just great. I got him to knock the price down forty grand. All I got to do is come up with two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and the plane's no tell is mine. No problem, huh? I'll figure out the way. Oh, come on, Molly. How am I going to come up with that kind of money? I mean, I'm driving over here. I realize this is the biggest dream of my life. And what am I doing messing around with this kind of stuff? Hey, I don't want to hear that. You're right. You're right. I probably sound like the world's biggest loser. No, you don't. Even if everybody turns you down, you still won't be a loser. Yeah, well, how do you figure that? They'll be the losers, because they weren't the ones who were smart enough to back you. Just have to stick to this, Jake. Eventually, you're going to find somebody who understands. And by then, the Plains Motel will be gone, Molly. Well, there will be other discos, all right? that you could make everything all right. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Just wouldn't do this. And this. Oh. Why do you want to do this and this? Because <laughs> I think you're wonderful. Wonderful? Mm -hmm. I am so wonderful that I've blown every single plan for this movie. No, out. your dreams. I love them, Jake. Don't give up on them, okay? I won't. I promise. All right. As long as you do that, everything's going to be fine. Well, thanks for the tip. Well, Kathleen is here now. Uh, you want to talk to her? Okay. I'll tell her. Bye. Who is that? <laughs> MJ. She's at war. She said she'll see you tonight. Yes, she what? To warn me. Oh, about Pop. Apparently, he called her at the office. Says he's coming to town. One of these days at high noon, he'll be gunning for me. It seems exaggerating. Yeah? Yeah. Then why did she offer me her bulletproof vest? Oh, come on, Cass. Don't be ridiculous. She said that he was yelling so loud that even after she hung up, the guy from the office could still hear him. Uh, yeah. He gets like that. When he comes to town, I'm going to get myself a six-shooter. And we're going to have a showdown on Main Street. There will be no fireworks. <laughs> there will only be a little uh, quiet father-to-daughter talk. No. I'm serious, Kathleen. This is between Vince and me. It's man-to-man. -man. It's the only thing he's going to respect. I'll straighten him out. Or he'll straighten you out. I can handle Vince. I can be very persuasive. It'll be long enough to persuade me. Okay, cheap shot. This is ludicrous anyway. I mean, no one... Absolutely no one is going to stop me from marrying you. I'm very glad about that, but I'm not looking forward to high noon on Main Street. You'll never know what hit him. What are you doing back so early, anyway? I couldn't sit in the office knowing that you were here, so I brought some work home. I also thought that we could go over to your house and pick up your things. Um, we have to talk about that. Isn't the bureau large enough? No. No, 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 it's fine. It's just that, uh, well, I was thinking while I was cleaning it out. Cass, I don't want to stay here with you before we get married.
can you do this? You're moving out before you even moved in. Let's not fight about this, please. I'm not fighting. I just want to know what's going on here. Look, we'll be spending the rest of our lives together. What does this one of you do with me? It's Pops, isn't it? No. Well, maybe just a little bit. He's just going to have to understand, Kathleen. It's not 1948 anymore. People live together before they get married these Look, days. if I stay here, it's just going to make, make it that much more difficult for him to uh, understand and accept all of this. That's not our fault. I want him to feel good about us. It's important to me. I want him to feel good about us, too. But that doesn't mean we have to be afraid of him. I'm not afraid. Then why are you putting on this act? But it's not an act. Sure it is. Separate beds until the honeymoon act. You may want separate beds during the honeymoon. Kathleen. Come on. We'll be fine together. Whatever I can do to make it easy for you or to make you feel loved, you know I'll do. I know. I trust you. Have an indoor picnic in front of the fire. You take a lot of work with me? Oh, that can wait. Come on. Okay. Great. It'll be a picnic you'll never forget. Three hundred thou. Yes. Aren't you going to ask me why I want it? Okay. Why? I want to buy the Plains Motel for Jake, or a wedding gift. Marley's Jake? Yes. Well, see, he has all these dreams, and I want to help him come true. Why? I owe him a lot. We, we grew up together. Yeah, so I heard. See, I was never very good to him. I think he missed out on a lot of chances because of me, and I, I want to make it up to him. Mm -hmm. Well, $300,000 is a lot of making up. Well, it, it wouldn't be just a gift. It would be kind of an investment, you know? You know, Jake's got all these ideas. He could make good on the money. You should hear him talk about the plan. You know what himself. I think? What? I think you are in love with your sister's fiancé. Well, I... And I think that you want him forever in your debt. It's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. How long did uh, you go out with Jake before Marlon? I went out with him... It must be hard to forget him. You know, if it wasn't your sister, I mean, if you and Jake had just parted and gone your separate ways, that'd be one thing. But to see them together all the time... It's got to hurt. Yes, I'm tiny, it does. Do you think it's a dumb idea? I do. I don't know why I'm talking to you anyway. I mean, I hardly know you at all. You probably think I'm crazy. No, I don't. I, I'm glad you came. I like you. You're all right. Even with all the mystery. So, I guess the answer is no. Well, what do you think? We could use my money. I mean, when I'm 21, I inherit millions of dollars. So you could just, you could just write it against mine. Victoria, I'm not Santa Claus. You like Marty, too, don't you? I do. And you think this would cause a lot of trouble? Wouldn't it? I think it would help Jake. Victoria, uh, would you and Marty like to have dinner with me tonight? Never been turned down and then asked out in the same night. Well, it's always the first time. Yeah. All right, I'll give Marley a call. Jake, too? Fine. Fine. You know, you're really a weird man. <laughs> well, is that a cut or a compliment?
trouble finding the words for. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Look at us, the two biggest yakkers in Bay City, and a loss for words. <laughs> hey, you see that tree over there? Yeah. That was a present for you. There was a sign with it that said, watch me grow. <laughs> kind of corny. Why didn't you give it to me? I know, what's the point? Look, Nancy, uh, oh, I don't want you to feel bad, you know, I just... I know. You think I'm hopelessly immature, don't you, Chris? No, I don't. I think you've grown a lot. And you've helped me to grow, too. You really mean that? Yeah, I do. You made a big difference in my life, Nancy. I can't forgive what I did at the hearing, right? No, that's not it. You did what you thought was right. You told the truth. You can't blame yourself for what happened at the hearing. I treated those patients. This has nothing to do with the hearing. You've come to say goodbye, haven't you? I'm 15 years old. Ooh. I'm in the middle of the Arboretum of the Stockton Mansion on Haskell Road. And what are you doing there? I snuck in. Mm -hmm. It's spring, you see, and everything is in bloom, and it is the most beautiful place on Earth. I just found out that I won the high school creative writing contest. Oh, congratulations. Thank honey. you very much. I'm in 10th heaven. Not to be confused with the 10th grade. Oh. I feel like life is just beginning for me. Everything out there is right before me and that there is no limit to what I can do. I kind of feel that way right now. Kind of like a new beginning. You have a way. When I'm with you, everything seems to fall into place. Can this last? Can this feeling possibly last? It can. Me back. Did you tell him the twins didn't need him? I couldn't say that, Donna. Why not? Because I don't believe it. He's their father. They have the right to know that. I won't tell them. I won't tell them. I don't believe that I let you talk me into this. That's right. You just abandoned me in an impossible situation. This is not an impossible situation. Nobody cares about me. What do you think I am doing here? I interrupted my honeymoon for you. I love you very much. Just tell me what you said to Michael. Michael Hudson is not about to let anybody push him around. And I can't see that I blame him. What are you saying? Donna, it's over. It's time to face the music. Don't you see, Nancy? Well, you and me in Egypt, that's where we really quit. And in the Southwest, that was our best time. Yeah, it was pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, it was. But those were dangerous, romantic places. I mean, we were on this great adventure. All the 
differences between us didn't seem to matter. We didn't have time to think about it. But back here, in reality, uh, it just seems obvious to me that we aren't really meant for each other. Yeah. But if it feels good, then it is good. That's all there is to it. 